Right now on the 10 o'clock news, success on the moon. The Odysseus lunar lander, nicknamed Odie, is upright and starting to send data, according to Odie's developer, Intuitive Machines. Cheers from the team today, right there, making this lander the first U.S.-made spacecraft to touch down on the moon in 50 years. And we have this beautiful Love shot that. of the moon for you this <laughs> evening, where history was made again. Engineers, they had to overcome navigation issues really to pull off this highly difficult landing. Not an animation right there. This is live, right? And we're still waiting to see the first images from the moon, from the Odysseus lander. Its mission is designed to assess the lunar environment of the moon's south pole ahead of NASA's current plan to return a crewed mission there in late 2026. And liftoff. The uncrewed lander developed by a private company launched last Thursday from Kennedy Space Center. A week later, Odie entered lunar orbit and then landed on the moon near the South Pole. Officially, it arrived at 6.24 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, what an outstanding effort. I know this was a nail biter, but we are on the, on the surface and we are transmitting. And uh, welcome to the moon. Houston, Odysseus has found his new home. And bearing the dream of a new adventure, a new adventure in science, innovation, and American leadership in space. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, Florida's former U.S. Senator and an astronaut himself, says the landing site was chosen to test the limits of the craft and to gain valuable insights for future landings. The South Pole is particularly hard because it is pockmarked with all of these craters. And remember that the South Pole, if, if this is the bottom of the moon and the sunlight is coming in like this, you've got these deep, deep shadows. The condition of the spacecraft wasn't immediately known, but it already achieved a better result than last month. There was a failed landing attempt and then burning up as it came back to Earth 10 days later. This time, even with some challenges in communication, the landing is the first commercial spacecraft to make touchdown on the moon. And only a handful of countries have successfully landed vehicles on the moon in the more than 50 years since the United States and the Soviet Union achieved that milestone in 1966. China, India, Japan all reached the moon with robotic vehicles for the first time in the 21st century. India and Japan each pulling off that monumental feat just within the past six months. So joining us right now here in studio, Dr. Jack Hewitt, associate professor of physics at the University of North Florida and an expert in astrophysics. That means he's a rocket scientist. <laughs> Dr. Hewitt, this was so incredibly exciting. So much drama when we were watching yeah. this live, waiting to see what happened. Just give us perspective. How hard is it to land softly on the moon. Well, you have to be going incredibly fast to escape the Earth, and just to get to the moon, you're traveling kilometers a second. So this had to slow down and decelerate very quickly so that it wouldn't just crash into the moon like every previous commercial lander had done. It's really so. We knew there were some issues today. We heard uh, about pitch and some of these things, some communication uh, glitches or issues. Was this exciting or disappointing that all of that was going on? Because, again, for us who aren't the experts, we were just riveted to what was happening. Well, it's still a success. It's landed and it's reached the moon. Uh, there's about 11 minutes there where the spacecraft lands itself, and there's nothing you can really do except hope that everything worked out Thank as you, you. planned. Uh, it didn't work out as planned. They actually had to use one of the NASA experimental LIDARs that was on, on board. And so their, their uh, range finding system didn't work, but fortunately NASA had some equipment that they were testing that they could use. Probably pretty important to have backup systems like that, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, and speaking of that LIDAR, that was an experimental system in itself using lasers to kind of guide this, it, this thing. Talk about some of the equipment that was on there. What impressed you, and how does this set up the next yeah. mission? Yeah, a lot of this was just a technology demonstrator. So like LiDAR, which you'd have on like self-driving cars, that's really helpful for landing on the moon, and obviously it worked today. Um, some of the other equipment that they had, well, they had two astronomy experiments, which I, I was excited about. They had a little radio telescope, because someday we hope to build radio telescopes on the far side of the moon. And they had a little optical telescope to take pictures of the Milky Way. Um, but then the rest of it was really technology focused on helping the Artemis program land on the moon within uh, two, three years. 
Yeah. yeah. So we are so close to the Space Coast, right? I mean, we're, we're right here. What's UNF's connection this week to what we saw tonight? Uh, I know it's, it's pretty exciting and something that you guys offer to everyone who's interested. Yeah, uh, at UNF, you know, we have a, a really great little astronomy program within the physics department, and some of the graduates that we've had have gone on and worked for some of these commercial space programs or the Space Force. Um, so they're designing technology that, that hopefully will contribute to Artemis, uh, and hopefully also commercializing space, because that would really make things uh, a lot more viable. Uh, at UNF, we, we have a lot of public outreach, so if you're interested in space, it would be great to, to come by. We do uh, astronomy us, nights. Yeah, yeah, tell us about this. It's, You've got one coming up. It's tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow night. Uh, we've actually got a NASA engineer from Huntsville coming. Um, and so Dr. Alex Blanchard is going to talk about some of the technologies that he's d developing for, for uh, the Artemis project. And if it's clear, you're welcome to come and stargaze with us. So, got to ask you this. Yeah. Were there, was there anything you were anticipating or looking for and didn't happen or, you know, things that surprised you? I'm just trying to dig into that brain and, and figure out what you think as the expert on all this. I mean, I was really excited about probably the least important part, uh, the little selfie module that they had built at Emory Riddle. And so this was built by students and it was going to pop off during the landing and take a picture of the landing on the moon, which would be really historic. Now, whether it's worked or not, we don't know yet, but hopefully by tomorrow, uh, we'll know one way or the other. We'll be waiting a to try selfie. and find it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dr. Jack Hewitt from UNF, thank you so much for your insights tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.